Just like any other basic electrical circuit, the starter motor uses power load and ground. To be successful diagnosing starting problems, it is very helpful to understand a little bit about how the starter works. The purpose of the starter is to turn the flywheel. The flywheel is the big gear at the back of the engine. When the flywheel turns, the crankshaft turns, and when the crankshaft turns, the pistons go up and down. If you add the right amount of air and fuel and provide spark at the right time, the engine starts. After the engine starts, the igniting of the air and fuel in each cylinder is what now moves the pistons up and down. The crankshaft is now turned by the pistons through the connecting rods and the starter is no longer needed, the engine is running. The starter motor consists of several main components. We have the motor itself, which has an armature which spins inside this housing here, which goes from the front to the back here. And notice there's a gear on the front end of this armature. When you apply power to this circuit, there's a mechanism that's built into this other part of the starter, the solenoid, that will allow this lever to push that gear forward into the flywheel. And the flywheel is positioned right next to this area here so that when the gear moves forward, it meshes with the flywheel and turns the engine over. The solenoid's job is to do a couple of things. It's to provide a switch path so that the high current power from the positive battery cable that's connected to the battery terminal of the starter can now get to the motor terminal of the starter, which is lower. And later on, I'll show you a different picture with the starter turned so you can see these different terminals. The other purpose of the solenoid is to throw the gear forward using what's called a starter fork. So just picture, picture there's a fork right here connecting to the starter drive mechanism and also connecting to the solenoid. When we power up the solenoid, the solenoid pulls in a rod that pulls this way and that shifter fork is going to pivot and what's going to happen is by pulling this way on the top of the fork it's going to pivot on that pin and push the gear forward and then when we release the key we're also releasing the power to the solenoid which will allow that fork to go back to its normal position and the gear will no longer be in contact with the flywheel anymore because the starter is no longer needed. So in its simplest form, we need power load and ground to activate the solenoid, and we also need power load and ground to spin the motor. In the next video, we're going to look at a simple schematic that takes away all of the extra control switches and just shows the simplest version of power load and ground for the starter circuit. And then once we understand that, we'll move on to more complex schematics that includes some of the other features and protections that are built into modern cars today, where they use additional switches and relays to either control or protect certain circuits of the car so that the starter will not start under certain conditions and will be allowed to start under other conditions.